Hello and welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you are watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. We're going to be talking about Ukraine now. All right, man, these wars, like there's just so much information coming out every single day on what's going on over here. And Ukraine is just really popping off right now. There's been so much information coming out on Ukraine, which is why I've been covering Ukraine a lot lately. So we've got two major events that have happened here in the last 24 to 48 hours. The most recent event is the one you see on the left side of your screen here, where it says bakery was shelled by Ukraine. So this information is just coming out today, actually, uh, just this morning. And apparently the Ukrainians had launched some um, artillery shells, I believe, because uh, they're saying that they were shelled, that this, uh, this you know, Bakery was shelled, so I'm assuming it's artillery shells. And uh, apparently we've got at least 28 people that have killed, so dozens and dozens of people killed already. And this is also following, what was it, just about two weeks ago maybe? Maybe two weeks ago we had that attack in the Donetsk region of Ukraine. This is a Russian-occupied area of Ukraine, okay? It was originally Ukrainian territory, but it got taken over by the Russians when they invaded. Okay, so that this was in the Donetsk region. Can't remember the name of the city, but it was shelled as well by artillery from Ukraine. And they hit like a market, uh, like a little shopping area, like a plaza. And dozens of people were killed there. I can't remember exactly how many, somewhere around 20, 30 people or so, maybe 40. Uh, were killed by these these uh, shells as well. So this is the second time that we've seen a major story like this. This uh, bakery as well, I forgot to mention, but it's actually located in uh, Luhansk, okay? This is the eastern region of Ukraine as well that is also Russian-occupied, okay? The name of the city or the town was uh, Lysis, Lysychansk. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I might be butchering that. But Lysychansk, okay, was the name of the town that was hit. And this is in the region of Luhansk in eastern Ukraine. This is in Russian-occupied territory. Okay, so once again, we've got Ukraine shelling these areas that have been, uh, you know, basically taken over by Russia. All right, so 28 people were killed here so far. That's just what's coming out right now. I'm sure that number is going to rise um, and I know you can't see everything here in this photo, but uh, there was much more damage than what you just see right there. Okay, so and then on the right side of your screen, you see the Luke Oil oil facility. Okay, that was hit in the last like 24 hours or so. Uh, this was yet another drone attack on an oil facility deep inside of Russia. Okay, we're going to be talking about that as well. That's at least uh, the, I don't know, sixth or eighth attack on an oil facility. And I've been saying that, you know, Ukraine is, is deliberately targeting these oil facilities. And what they're doing here is they're going after Russia's energy sector, especially their oil, because their oil is where they get a lot of their money from to fund this war. So the more damage they do on these oil facilities, the more of an economic uh, strain it's going to put on, on Putin's war inside of Ukraine, okay? And and obviously, you know, they, they would have to inflict massive, massive amounts of damage to really do some, some major harm here. But every one of these strikes is doing something, okay? It's it's adding up, and this is more and more facilities getting hit. And I really want to say there's a, probably at least somewhere between five and eight oil facilities that have been hit already, okay? I know for sure at least five, well more than that. So first I want to talk about this uh, this shelling here, okay, on this bakery. Very terrible what's happening, and this shouldn't be going on, but Ukraine's been doing this. They've been shelling these regions quite often for a while now, um, and I know a lot of these contested regions have been under attack for a long time. You know, Ukraine's been attacking these areas for, you know, the last 10 years or so, maybe even longer than that. So um, this is not the first time this has happened, but just frequently, it looks like uh, Ukraine's really been, really been trying to attack all these, uh, you know, these Russian occupied areas. And it's almost like they don't really have any interest of taking them back anymore because imagine how the citizens are going to feel in that city that, you know, the, these people that were once technically Ukrainians, 
even if they'd consider themselves Russians, they were technically Ukrainians. And then whenever it got taken over by the Russians, now they, you know, they've given in to, to Russian uh, demand and, and under their control, right? So now we've got Ukraine attacking these cities. So uh, at least 28 people killed in strike on Russian-occupied town in eastern Ukraine. So let's read over this a little bit. At least 28 people have been killed in an attack on a building in the town of Lysychansk in the Russian-occupied region of Luhansk in eastern Ukraine, the region's uh, Moscow-installed head said Sunday. In a statement on Telegram, the head of self-proclaimed Luhansk People's Republic, uh, Leonid Pasachnik, said emergency services had rescued 10 people from under the rubble after what he said was a Ukrainian attack on a building, uh, building housing a bakery on Saturday. Pasachnik said Sunday has been declared a day of mourning in the Luhansk People's Republic for the victims of the attack. Ukraine's defense ministry has not commented on the incident. I noticed that this always happens too. Whenever whenever the, these attacks happen, and clearly it's most likely coming from Ukraine, I notice right away Ukraine doesn't really say anything. They kind of just are like, oh, that happened? Okay. Don't know where it came from, but uh, yeah, I mean, I know it came from the West, but... It wasn't from us. You know, it's kind of how they, it seems like they report it. So, uh, so Lys Lysychansk was taken over by Russian forces in July 2022, becoming the last town in the key region of Luhansk in eastern Ukraine to fall. Ukraine has been escalating its attacks on Russia and Russian controlled territory as its ground offensive stalls. Earlier this week, Ukraine's military int intelligence says it sank a Russian warship off the coast of Crimea landing the latest in a series of blows to Russia's Black Fleet. I actually did a video on that. If you want to go and check it out, head over to my page and you'll find it. I just put that out, uh, yeah, within the last week. So last month, Russian Defense Ministry said it stopped Ukrainian drones headed towards Moscow and St. Petersburg. Also in January, an oil depot was set ablaze as a result of a Ukrainian drone strike in Russia's uh, Bryansk region bordering Ukraine. So this was another oil depot that was hit on top of the one I'm about to report. So yeah, there's there's been multiples, at least five to eight, maybe more. Uh, but there's been quite a few. You know, we're coming up to almost 10 different oil depots that have been hit. In December, Ukraine launched an attack on the Russian border uh, city of Belgorod, killing at least 24 and wounding 100, 108 others. Russia responded with retaliatory strikes on Kharkiv. So, yeah, I mean, uh, Ukraine is is definitely, you know, they're they're ramping up their operations over here and really starting to attack uh, the the eastern portion of Ukraine and also the the western side of Russia. So, like anywhere on the on the border of Russia, Ukraine is just bombing all these areas. Mainly, artillery shells is what they're launching, uh, but there are some rocket attacks and drone attacks going on here too. So. Ukraine is definitely upping their game here, and uh, I also saw a an article recently that was talking about uh, Zelensky stating that supposedly he's got an army of like 880,000 people now. Not sure where he got all these people from, but he was stating that he was going to be able to conscript many of these people who fled the country at the beginning of the war and basically... Uh, you know, they, they would have to be found in these other countries and then brought back to Ukraine, obviously, right? But, um, you know, he, he's, he's stating that supposedly he's got a massive size army, supposedly double the size of, of uh, Russia's army. So I'm not sure where all these people are coming from, but uh, I'm not sure if that's just propaganda or what that is. But we're, we're definitely hearing that supposedly Ukraine is building their army back up. And we have been seeing a lot of shelling going on over here in these areas. And and at the same time, Zelensky has been coming out and saying, hey, you know, we need we need artillery shells. They were saying they were only able to fire like 2,000 a day. I saw reports on that, that they were limited on how many they could fire. So if they're limited on how many they could fire, why are they over here firing them at bakeries inside of a, inside of a used-to-be Ukrainian village or town? That part doesn't really make much sense to me. You would think they'd be going after directly like the army, you know, the the Russian army or something like that. But uh, no, they're they're targeting civilian areas as well. So 
Neither side on this conflict really is in the right. Both of them are equally attacking civilian targets, and I'm not really sure what's going on with that. I don't see what the, what the point of that is, you know, other than just to just to massively, you know, uh, harm civilians. Like, there's no there's no real reason to go after civilians, but apparently both of the sides of this conflict are doing that. So it's pretty terrible. All right, I got this next article up. We're going to talk about this Luke Oil oil facility. Okay, explosions hits oil refinery deep inside Russia after suspected drone strike. Okay, so this was just coming out uh, just yesterday. Okay, just early yesterday morning. A fire broke out in an oil uh, refinery in southern Russia, 200 miles from the border with Ukraine. Following a drone strike, local authorities said a blaze at the Luke Oil site in Volgorod comes amid reports of Kiev stepping up its targeting of energy facilities in Russia. Volgorod Regional Governor Andrei Bucharov said in, in, on a telegram that Russian air defenses and electronic warfare systems had repelled a drone attack in the region overnight on Friday. As a result, one drone fell and set off a fire at the Volgorod oil refinery. So, I think it's interesting that they say a lot that they shoot these things down and then, oh, they fell out of the sky and started a blaze. And who knows, maybe they could just be saying that because they don't want to admit that it actually was just directly hit by a drone that wasn't necessarily shot down. But it's possible. Maybe they shot it down, uh, you know, right over the, the oil facility and then it happened to fall down and blow up. But once again, another attack on an oil facility and... Ukraine has been doing a really good job with this lately. They have been taking out lots of oil facilities. They've been uh they supposedly took down that warship that I reported on just a few days ago in the Black Sea. They've been inflicting lots of massive damage to the the Russians, okay, and Putin's war here. They even took down a spy plane that was like 300 million dollars apparently. Uh they they've been they've been doing some damage here for sure. And for for a, an army that supposedly doesn't have a lot of equipment and they're struggling and they need help from the West, I mean, they're putting up a fight here, definitely for sure. And the and the, the Russians are are, you know, they're they're having a, a run here for their money. Like if they really want to take Ukraine, they're gonna have to really up their game to really take this because the like, Ukrainians are doing a pretty decent job so far, at least in my opinion, to hold up here against the, the massive Russian army. Okay. So unverified video of social media purports to show the moment of the strike as a blast can be seen in the night sky over the Krasno Armeskai Armeski district of the city, which borders Rostov Oblast in the southwest and Vronyets Oblast in the northwest. Newsweek has yet to be unable to verify the details of the footage and has contacted Luke Cole for comment via email. So there is some footage here, but I'm not going to play it because it's unverified. We have no idea if it's legitimate or not. So um, in sharing the clip, Ukrainian in, uh, internal affairs advisors, Anton Ger Geroshenko, man, these guys have some crazy names that are hard to pronounce, posted on X, formerly Twitter, that the oil refinery is the largest producer of petroleum products in the Russian Southern Federal District with a reported uh, capacity of 14.8 million tons. That's a lot. A lot of, of oil. Um, yeah, so I, I see why uh, Ukraine decided to target this, this uh, you know, this oil facility here. So next to the video, the flames billowing into the air, pro-Ukrainian ex-user Tendar posted that part of the facility won't be operational for some time. So, yeah, I, I did check out this video earlier and apparently there's some explosion over here off in the, in the you know, the deep side of this town over there. Um, so Russia's emergency situations ministry said that petroleum products were burning over an area of around 3,200 square feet, but the blaze was quickly brought under control. There were no dead or injured, state news agency RIA Novosti reported. Okay, so real quick, foreign security policy expert Gior uh, Georgi, Georgi Revishvili posted on X that Ukrainian armed forces Continue successful strikes deep inside Russia. The attrition of Russian high-value targets will be far more devastating when Ukraine significantly increases drone production. So about that, if you weren't aware about that, 
we just had a deal that was brokered between Ukraine and the UK. Okay, so Rishi Sunak, Prime Minister of UK, came out and said, we're going to be giving Ukraine thousands upon thousands of drones. I'm talking thousands, tens of thousands probably, maybe even hundreds of thousands. There's no definite number, right? They're going to be building... Um, drone facilities inside Ukraine and inside a like abroad, you know, potentially in the UK or maybe some other surrounding countries closer to Ukraine. And they're going to be building a lot of drones for them. So imagine when they get all of these drones. If Russia's having a hard time defending from the amount of drones they have right now, wait till they're getting, you know, 10,000 a week, 20,000 a week or something like that. Whenever these drone facilities really get pushed into high gear and pumping these things out. You uh, Russia is, we're just going to have we're going to have uh, articles coming out every day of Russia being attacked by drones. It's going to be insane. And I really think what they're going to use these for is to go after more of these oil facilities and when they start getting a lot of these Russia's really going to have to defend these oil facilities because if they don't they're going to have some massive problems here with their oil and energy sector. Social media users noted the increased uh, frequency of drone strikes on Russian energy infrastructure over the last few weeks, which Kiev often does not claim response, uh, direct responsibility for. You see what I mean? So we, we constantly keep having these attacks from Ukraine. So Ukraine will obviously attack these oil facilities, obviously attack this town, just like they uh, attacked a week ago or two weeks ago, that, that market I was telling you about in the Donetsk region. Okay, and they, they keep going after these uh, these different areas of Russia, and then they don't they don't claim responsibility for it, which I think is very interesting. I'm not sure why they're doing that, but it's very obvious where it's coming from, right? I mean, who else could it be coming from? Unless it's coming from a much higher intelligence, and Ukraine doesn't want to admit that, if you know what I mean. It could be it could be somebody else involved here that's not necessarily Ukraine, aka the West. Okay. So not quite sure what's happening there, but yeah, they're not reporting it much or, or claiming responsibility for these attacks. So yeah, there's a lot happening over here in Ukraine, and uh, that's the earliest um, news that we have here is that bakery that was shelled here. Very terrible that at least 28 people were killed by this and innocent civilians just trying to run that bakery. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's the latest here, and, and Ukraine continues to attack these oil facilities uh, like I said, that's at least like 7th or 8th attack, maybe 10th by now. I have no idea. They've just been attacking so many of these oil facilities. It's insane. And they're really trying to go after oil um, inside of Russia because that's where they get their money from. They get their money from oil. And especially since the start of like 2021 or so when oil prices really started to rise, inflation started to rise, that's when oil prices started to really go up. And uh, Putin was definitely benefiting from this war, and that's where they that's where they got all this money to launch this operation. And as long as they continue to make all this money off oil, they're going to continue their war. Okay, if they didn't have the money, they wouldn't be able to fund this war. But clearly, they're able to spend a decent portion of their budget to continue this war in Ukraine. So I think that's what uh, Ukraine's plan is to is to go after these oil facilities, so that way they can they can help put an end to this war. Because they know they, they can't really defeat Russia directly, okay? Like, you know, man-to-man -man power. It's just most likely not going to happen. But if they can go after them economically and shut down the war that way, that may be the way to go. So, appreciate you being here. That's going to be it for uh, the news here on Ukraine. If anything else comes out, I'll update you. But thank you for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this video, like the video. And uh, subscribe to the channel as well if you enjoy my content. Come back and hang out with us another time. And uh, hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you as soon as a new video goes live. So thanks so much for hanging out, guys. Hope you all have a great day. And we'll see you all in the next one. Take care and God bless.